Hello and welcome back to AmbiV. I'm Casper and today we're going to do a brief review of the Autolift SJ35 I recently purchased and unveil the new wheels for the 2004 Dodge Viper. This video is actually a review discussion of the Autolift SJ35, but before we go into the car to look at the jack, let's go ahead and discuss why I bought it and admire the wheels on the 2004 Dodge Viper. Now, for those of you following the channel, this is your first look at the new wheels. These are from BC Forged, and they're in roughly the same specification as the factory wheels. Now, just going to this look of wheel on the car improved the aesthetics of the car immensely. It looks much newer than it actually is. Now, unfortunately, because of the BC coilovers also on the car, my car was actually too low for my jacks to get underneath to lift it up to put the wheels and tires on. Also, I needed to do an e-brake relocation because even though the wheels were supposed to be in factory spec, the design of the barrel actually made them interfere with the emergency brakes, which meant I needed the car pretty high in the air to be able to reach up above the differential and reroute the cables for the emergency brakes. Now, this is really where the purchase of the SJ35 came in. The Autolift 3,500 pound jack is actually designed to work on a four post lift. It rides between the rails and is super low profile. So it would be low enough to work with this car and give me the ability to have the headroom to stand under the car to reroute the cables. So that's really where the purchase came from, even though it costs probably almost half as much as the entire lift it's being used on. So let's go ahead and get under the car and take a look at the jack. Under the car here, we can see the main body of the jack. Now the jack is very simple. It has the main body unit with all the warnings telling you not to chop your fingers off. It has a pump handle for building up the hydraulic pressure that causes it to lift. It has a pressure relief to let the pressure off so that the jack can come back down. And it has a safety release. Once you've jacked the jack up to certain points, this will drop a metal bar into place, preventing it from coming down until you release it. Now, if you leave the jack sit for a couple days or something, you may have to jack it up and pump it a few times before you can actually release it because it probably will have settled down on that. But the idea is that it can't just suddenly drop on you or settle overnight and drop the car on the brake rotors, which would be terrible. Now, the unit came out of the box basically like this. All I did was unbox it, put it on here, and put the accessories on it. I had no problems. All the fittings were tight and it was full of fluid. I don't know if that's the case every time, but out of the box, it was in perfect working order, and that's kind of pleasantly surprising given how most things come from China these days. Now, I will say that this has some adjustability to fit on various lifts. These arms slide out side to side and have smooth contact pads on them to make it easier to slide up and down your rails. However, because of where this boxing fits, it may not fit every lift. When I purchased this, the vendor on Amazon reached out to me to make sure it would fit my lift. I would say that if you're buying it from a vendor that doesn't, I would look for some sort of fitment guide just to verify your rails or something aren't going to interfere with the body of the jack. Now the jack is rated for 3,500 pounds and I lifted the Viper, which is probably 3,200-ish, 3, 3,400 pounds total, and I'm lifting one half of that, and it had no problems with it. The most disconcerting thing about it is the arms where these pads ride, just like any lift, are going to be extendable and as you extend them out they droop because they're coming out of the body of the jack. That can be a little disconcerting, but in my case actually gave me more clearance for what I was working with. Now the front of the jack actually has storage for your spacers. So if you're working with something like a truck or a much higher older car, you do have some spacers on the jack itself to reach up to the jack points. Now this jack isn't designed to lift very high. You don't need to lift something very high, you just need to lift the contact off of the tires to be able to do your work. But you stack a few of these there, you can get up to a pretty tall vehicle. If you needed to get taller, I would say you've got plenty of room just to put regular jacks on your rails and do it right there. Now all in all, I think this was a pretty good buy. If you're not doing a lot of work, the price point at about $1,000 probably isn't going to be worth it just because you need to get some use out of it. But as this is the only jack that works well with my Viper, I'm going to be using it a lot. I just have to keep in mind that in order to actually get the Viper on the lift, I need to slide it forward. And to actually get my contact pads installed in the arms, I actually need to move it back here to where I have space in the wheel wells to put them in. Otherwise, it works perfectly. 
If you have any questions about this or anything you've seen in the video, please leave them in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.